Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello there everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I thought we could do something a little bit different. I was planning on doing this in a different home, but the housing market is absolutely bonkers and I have decided to postpone that till fall or next year, whatever feels right. But right now it's a little cuckoo. And I'll be talking about that more in a vlog to come on my other channel if you're interested in the ins and outs of it all. But because I thought I was moving, I packed away absolutely everything that I own, including all of my herbs, everything I use for work, and just my home. So I've been unpacking it the last couple days and I realized that I have three boxes filled to the brim with herbs and I thought that it might be fun to go through them with you. I have my compost bucket here. I have quite a few herbs that I think it's probably time to retire them or just reprioritize them. So some of them have lost their medicinal value. I've had them too long, so they'll become just magical. Or like these that I put up to get through the winter, they've done their purpose and now I'm going to compost them so that I have these jars again and so that I can move forward with more seasonal practices for spring. So I don't really have a super plan for this video, I just figured we'd go through and chat about the herbs that I have and what my plans are with them, maybe some tidbits about them magically or medicinally, I don't know, whatever feels right in the moment. Besides, this makes unpacking everything a little bit more fun and less daunting. So very excited to get started. But before I do, this video is sponsored, so let's hear a little bit more about that. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is a website building and hosting company. And as I'm currently working on putting up a website, it is very exciting to get to partner with them. With Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock creative design. You get to start with a best in class website template and customize every detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. You can stretch your imagination when it comes to online design with Fluid Engine, built in and ready to go on any new Squarespace site. One thing I really love about Squarespace is their flexible website template. You get to get started with one of their professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. Then customize your look, update the content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want, so your idea, brand, or business stands out online on every device and can be as unique to you as you dream. Another thing that I really love about Squarespace is the ease of working an online store. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. So if this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com slash thegreenwitch to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring, and let's get back to the video. Alrighty, welcome back. Let's unpack some of these herbs. Now, these ones, I'm not so sure how easy it'll be to get all of them out. I have calendula that I put in jars to put around my entire home. There is folklore that states that calendula, when seen, can invoke happiness. And so I placed it all over my home to bring happiness through the winter. But of course, it is no longer winter time, and so it is time to retire them. A lot of times when I am retiring herbs, I just put them into my compost. That way they go back into the earth and it's great and the energy is reabsorbed in a nice smooth way and it's really easy if you live in the city. And there is construction starting on my building, <laughs> so I will put this on pause and come back. Alrighty, I think that the construction has stopped for now. While that was going on, I emptied the rest of these jars and am ready to move on to what else I have here. I don't really know where I will be storing all of my herbs. I have historically kept them just above my kitchen cabinets, but it makes it a little harder to access them, so their homes may be changing. Perhaps that's another video though. So first and foremost, um, most of my jars are not labeled, and that is something that I need to work on and do with you today. So this one I know is mint. Unfortunately, there are 
a lot that I don't actually know what they are anymore because I thought I would remember. So this is your sign to not be like me and to actually label all of your jars, even if you think you'll remember. So, <laughs> mint. I have a ton of mint jars and I may try to combine them, but I don't know if that will end up being a good idea. This mint is still pretty good. I personally probably wouldn't use it for many medicinal practices. I've had it for quite a few years. Um, although it does still smell very strong. So when it comes to using herbs medicinally, usually you only want to keep dried leafy herbs for a, pan a few years. But as long as they still have their color and their scent, they are still fairly useful. It's once they kind of lose all of that color and scent that there's not as much potency within them. But you can still use herbs like that for magical purposes forevermore. So something to keep in mind. Now there's hammering. Fingers crossed, that's it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so next I have a bowl of thistles. It is said that keeping a bowl of thistles in the center of a room will strengthen the spirit of those within it. So I usually always keep a bowl of thistles. I don't always keep it in the center of the room. It does depend on what is most convenient, but these guys are wonderful and beautiful and I always like to have them in my main space. I also keep them in jars by the entryways to deter thieves and keep my home guarded. Those I still have in my entryways. Next, we have some already labeled lemon balm. I love my lemon balm. It is still very potent and perfect and wonderful. I use it in a lot of magic and in a lot of herbal remedies for usually anxiety. It's one of my favorite calming herbs. And it is also a great fortifying herb magically. Now, this one was gifted to me by Olivia, the Witch of Wanderlust. These are guava leaves. She gave them to me after my haunted table situation. They are not labeled, but she gave them to me to help clear the energy of my home. And I have used them a handful of times afterwards just to kind of start the energy from scratch. They are very potent and a gift that I cherish. Guava leaf. Maybe I'm gonna start putting my Strictly Magical over here. Okay, so now we're getting into a lot of the Strictly Magical. Um, I have these rose hips that I harvested a long while ago. I probably won't label these because I know 100% what they are. And I also usually just use these to scatter around my home whenever I feel like it needs a little bit more loving energy or to bring some energy of fall into my home. So I like having those around. These ones are rose buds. They are beautiful and wonderful and would still be valuable medicinally except for I lost the cap. And so they have been really out in the open and have been exposed to a lot of things that I probably would not want to use in medicine. So they have become strictly magical and I suppose I should give those ones a label just, just cause. I've been working with Rose a lot more lately in calming blends. I really like them as a love herb. Um, of course they are the most classic, but I also find them to just be really th that calming side of them I think has been underrated. So I've been really enjoying the, using them for that purpose as a leaf. So next up, I have two herbs that I think I am going to retire. This is goldenrod that I harvested quite a long time ago and horsetail that I also harvested quite a long time ago. I always intended on using the horsetail in something medicinal and getting to work with it and know it better, but I just have not really felt inspired to and it's about to start growing and will be fresh here. 
And I think if I am gonna work with it, I would prefer to work with it fresh. So goodbye to the horsetail. Horsetail is a very curious herb. It's old, it's ancient. And I hadn't ever seen it in person until I moved here. It's very cool to look at and uh, does look like a horsetail. Now goldenrod, I do adore. I really love working with it in the summertime, early fall. And I think it has a very curious, fun folkloric history. I mean, of course, anything with gold in the name, it ties very strongly to prosperity. But the ways in which it does and through the stories that are told with it are quite fun and worth looking into. I do talk about them some in my book. Or, uh, yeah, note, note quite a few of them if you're interested in that. But it is a beautiful, beautiful herb that I do quite adore, but I would like to get fresh. Okay, next up I have yet another mint, which I'm just gonna put next to this mint and we'll see if I end up combining them uh, into a different jar. And then this is garden sage. I really adore garden sage for its medicinal benefits and its culinary benefits. It also is lovely when burned. I do very occasionally work with it for that purpose, but most of the time I just kind of keep it on hand for uh, medicinal use. So this one is still very good, but it does need a label. Beautiful. Now, these are some very old roses that I have kind of kept on hand, similar to the purpose of these other rose hips that I have. But at this point, I really, really don't use them. They are collecting dust and this jar just is not so, not looking so nice anymore. So I will be retiring them. We're getting into some oldies here. This is clover just white clover flowers. I would not use these for medicine or anything like that, not, not anymore. I do think that they're fun to work with, especially when they're fresh for, I've made syrups with them before and I've really enjoyed that. I will retire these to be magical use only. This is nutmeg. This should be in my kitchen. I would only use the whole nutmeg in my kitchen. And here are some acorns. I probably won't label the acorns because I do know that they are acorns and I want to save my label paper <laughs> and I will label the clover to keep. So both the acorns and the clover will be kept for magical purposes only. I do really love working with clover for luck purposes. I think it's enjoyable in that sense. It's not one that I work with very often in magic, but I do enjoy it this time of year, spring. It's the right time of year in my opinion, and it makes me feel like I'm working with my home, kind of, especially since these ones were harvested from my home in Virginia. So it kind of reminds me of childhood, which is very lovely. And I like working with ingredients that are sentimental. All right, there are some things here too that I need to remember to restock. So this is orange peel, which I do definitely need to restock. This I use medicinally. I probably will not label this because I would like to get a bigger jar of it and we'll leave this be, uh, but I absolutely adore orange peel. Primarily I use it to flavor lip balms a lot and it's just, natural and lovely. This is a jar of rose. This I put around the home, so I will not be labeling this. I don't use these guys for individual spells. They are always used in the jar itself, so that will be placed in the home. Same with these. These are buttercups, although honestly, maybe I will be using them in spells, but I do know that these are buttercups, so I don't think I need to label them. I have terrible labeling habits if you can't tell, so don't don't be like me. This is lavender. This I will be combining with another lavender that I have. Now I do have to find that lavender jar. It's gigantic. Um, I don't think, well I know it's not in this box, but I don't actually know which box it is in yet, so that will be an exploration. But I will not be labeling this jar because this is such a small amount of lavender that I would like to add to my other jar. That jar I do use explicitly for magical purposes. 
I do like having lavender for medicinal purposes, but I did not purchase that lavender in a setting that felt that I felt good about using it for medicinal purposes. So magically, I do love it for its calming energies. It's also got a lot of rich, interesting folklore with love, if that's something you're interested in. It is a wonderful purifier. I mean, it, it has extensive magical ties and it is a pretty strong choice for a lot of workings. Really love it come spring and summer. It smells divine. It's just absolutely wonderful. So very pro lavender, I know most everyone is, so. I will be giving this a proper label and a proper jar. And I would like to get some lavender that I will use for medicinal purposes as well. I absolutely adore lavender tea for sleep or just calming anxiety. Honestly, I found nothing like it. Alrighty, we are getting into some more that I definitely would not use for anything other than magic. I know in my heart what this is, but I cannot remember. I think these are crab apple blossoms, but I could be wrong. But they are covered in a layer of dust because I also lost the lid for this jar and just don't look very good. So I am going to retire them, unfortunately. Pretty sure they're crab apple blossoms though. And this is why we label things. And this, I do know, is Fae. I love Fae in magic. I love it in cooking. These ones I would only ever use in magic from now on. They are very discolored. And I, I know that they have lost a lot of their medicinal and culinary value at this point. So I would still use them in magic though. And they are a great magical ally, but they deserve a label. Bay. Into the magic pile. So again, I have another non-labeled. I do know these are dogwood flowers, but it doesn't have a lid and it is just dusty and dog hair. So it will be retired, sadly. This one I know is St. John's wort because I peeled the label off. There are, um, in the city that I live in, a lot of little tiny uh, they look like little houses on a post and they can be libraries or pantries. People just fill them with all sorts of things. And there's one that I found that was an apothecary and they had St. John's wort. And so I uh, took a little bit of it and put it in this jar. It is a very, very fascinating medicinal. I have been recently kind of delving, oop, delving deeper into it. I do not feel very comfortable with it yet. There are so many contraindications tied to it and just so many things that you have to be careful with when taking it medicinally, but it can be such a fantastic aid for depression and anxiety. I mean, unbelievable. The studies that they've done with it, it's very, very impressive. But again, you have to be so careful with it because it has all sorts of drug interactions and it's just not something that I feel confident enough in to um, talk about fully. But I do find it really interesting and I do want to get more into it and understand it more. So perhaps I'll be delving more into this and I will talk to you guys more about it. But this does deserve a label. Beautiful. All right, and that will be going into the medicinal pile. I only have two more left. So, ooh, I don't remember what this one is. This is some purple grass from my yard in Virginia. Mm, I don't remember what it is, but I usually do just keep this around solely because it's from my yard in Virginia and it just reminds me of home. So again, won't be labeled, but I like to have it around, makes me happy. And then this, <laughs> I believe is either sarsaparilla or sassafras, but I'm pretty certain it's sarsaparilla. I think it's sarsaparilla. I do have a way to tell, but not right now. So I'm gonna label it sarsaparilla question mark. This doesn't have a question mark. I suppose that makes sense given 
that most people probably wouldn't label things with a question mark. That's not a very confident way to label, but I'll just say maybe. Whew, that's a long label. And this I will be putting in the medicinal pile. Now, at this point, I have been recording for over 30 minutes. I don't know how much time will actually be video because I have had to pause for construction a bit and also label making, but I think I might cut the video off here just to make sure it's not too long. I do still have two more full boxes of herbs to go through, so if you guys liked this, I'll keep making them. I might just keep making them. I'm having way more fun going through them and chatting with you about it. So you know what? Yeah, I'll keep making them. This is part one of going through my herbs. I have a ton of them and I think this will be fun and educational. Thanks for coming along with me on this journey of unpacking. Again, if you want to hear more of the story of what's been going on, I'll have that all in my other channel. So head on over there if you aren't already subscribed. All right, closing notes. If you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share art, herbal profiles, book recommendations, and monthly workshops. It's really what keeps things going over here, so I'm very grateful for all of you who are there. I recently cleaned it up quite a bit and uh, made it a little more precise and added collections and all sorts of things, so it should be much easier to navigate and more just enticing to look at. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Those of you who are there and those who want to check it out, go for it. And also, as you know, I wrote a book. It's about herbal magic and it's really just a beginner's guide to spell work. At the end of it, you should not be a beginner anymore. So all of these are linked down below, my Patreon, my other channel, and my book, if any of that's interesting to you. And yeah, thank you for coming along with me on this silly little journey of unpacking. And I look forward to seeing you again soon in the next endeavor of unpacking. So have a good day and yeah, I'll see you soon.